Hey, how are you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons, hope you're well. If you've ever tried to play fast up and down the neck, for instance... Something like that, you'll notice that to get that really fluid sound that the pro players get, you're going to need to use slides within, you know, all the notes. It's not just about picking every note. It's not just about hammer-ons and pull-offs. There's also a lot of sliding going on there in there as well. So in this lesson, I'm gonna give you two killer exercises to get this into your bass playing. Let's check it out. Okay, these exercises I'm gonna show you they're pretty easy, they're just based on a major scale, we're gonna use them on a G major scale. And all we're gonna do is play a two octave G major scale. Now if you haven't, if you don't know a two octave G major scale, it's the same as a one octave G major scale. But it carries on up to the top G here on the 12th fret of the G string. And there's multiple fingerings for this. If you only know one fingering, um, for, for the, let's say, for instance, the, the one octave scale, you probably already know this, that pattern there, because it's the most, you know, common pattern really. But knowing just one pattern for a major scale is not good enough. You know, it's, it's, you know, you can't always just jump to that one pattern. You need to use multiple patterns and then link them all together. And what I'll do, I will link to those beneath this video if you want to check out some of my other videos on scales. In fact, D -Mac, can we have them on the screen? Pow! Pow! We'll put some, uh, some scales videos on there for you and you can link to them so you can check out how I teach scales. But getting back to this exercise, I want to get slides into your playing. Now, first of all, when I'm sliding, say for instance, uh, a line such as... Know, playing something like that, you'll notice that I'm only ever sliding with my index rock, my index and my little finger. Like sometimes I'll slide with some other fingers, but predominantly 95% for, you know, lack of you know, data, 95% <laughs> of the time I'm sliding with the index finger or the little finger of my fretting hand, okay? So, and the way I like to get students to get this into their playing is just by playing a two octave scale and using slides every time you hit your first finger or your little finger. So let's look at exercise one, okay? Exercise one, we're just gonna play a G major scale and every time we use our index finger, I want you to slide to the next note of that major scale. Does that make sense? Check this out. So a G major scale. So we've just hit our first finger, okay? We're using that index finger. Every time you use your index finger, slide to the next note. Okay, so you just slid to the C. Then carry on. You just hit your first finger again, slide into the G. So that first eight notes, And you've got to get it smooth. It needs to, it can't be this. The note length needs to be all the same. Yeah? Let's carry on. And then you end up on your little finger and hey, let's just use a little finger to slide to that G, okay? So, real slow. Slide. 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 And this is the fingering that you have to use as well, okay? We're only ever shifting, sliding with our index finger when we hit, when we use it. Now, the, round here, there could be a problem area for some people. 
when you get to that G, because you've got G, A, B, it's a big stretch, but I, make sure you're not doing this. Yeah, you can do it. So can I, but when I'm playing it, I shift like that. Look at the first finger. The first finger does not stay on this fret after I've shifted. It moves up behind the first finger. You don't have to keep your, your hand extended out like this all the time because it's gonna to lead to injury. Okay, so here we go. Slide, 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 okay. smoothness now you can do this on the way down as well so we've got to our little finger we're gonna slide every time you know we hit our index finger slide slide again and this really tests whether you know your major scales okay I can remember I went to a, a great guitar player over here in the UK called Mark, Mike Walker, there is a Mark Walker, he's a keys player, uh, called Mike Walker, and we sat down, I must have been in my early 20s at the time, and he said, okay, so do you know your major scales? Of course I know my major scales. I know my major scales. He just literally ripped me to bits. He just destroyed me. I didn't know my major scales at all. Do you know your major scales, really? You know, do you know all the, all the fingerings interconnected all the way through the, you know, the fingerboard? I would say I need to still work on that stuff, so you do probably as well. So, and I'm saying this because a lot of <laughs> students come to me and the same as I went to Mike and they just think, oh yeah, I know my major scales, right? The major scale is the most important scale that you can learn. Everything's based off it, or, you know, a lot is based off it. So let's look at going down. Again, we're gonna slide with our index finger. Slide, slide, slide. I'm just putting them big gaps so you can see the finger in. And the finished product would sound like this. So from the top. Okay, so that's the first finger slide. Now, the next exercise is exactly the same, but we're gonna slide every time we use our pinky, okay? So, let's check this out. So, starting on the G again, so we're gonna play G, A, B, and again, that's that big stretch again, that three notes on one string. Make sure you're not extending like this, you know? Make sure you're using your shifting. Look at the index finger. Slide. So every time you hit that, that pinky, you're going to slide. And then, there you are. Once more. Slide. 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 Let's do it on the way down. Slide. 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 So let's go up and down with the pinky. Okay. So now I want you to go and practice this in your lines. You know, do it with these scales first. Um, get it into, you know, just so it feels natural. But after that, really, really try and get it into your own lines, you know, try and figure out how you can use this within, in your solo head, because I use it all the time. Um, it's just another part of, you know, my sort of like the, the, your, the bass playing that you need to have within your lines, especially if you're gonna be playing, you know, those faster. <laughs> You 
know, the fastest line, the fastest soloing type lines, you're going to need to get those slides into, uh, into your plane. So hopefully you, che you checked out this lesson. I think if you got to the end, you checked it out, right? Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. If you haven't been to Scott's Bass Lessons yet, scottsbasslessons.com, make sure you go over there. There's hours and hours of free tutorials just like this. And there's also something called, we call the Bass Players Toolkit. The Bass Players Toolkit is um, courses like free courses, backing tracks, there's a buyer's guide in there with Chris May from Overwater Bases. There's all these cool resources and I've packaged them up all as this free giveaway that you get when you sign up. There will be a link to it somewhere on this screen. Um, so other than that, make sure you click like. I'll love you forever. Uh, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.